Hello, I'm here on a winter afternoon with a colt we call Buddy. I will confess this is his second time being tied, but I thought I would go ahead and combine this second tying lesson with the very beginnings of getting him to where we can pick up his feet. Uh, we bought him several months ago, right after he was weaned, had never had his feet handled, and frankly, I haven't had the opportunity to really do that, and I want to get his feet trimmed, and it's just something that every horse should know. So what I'm going to do, I like to tie them up, because then you're not managing their movement and managing their feet at the same time. That's not written in stone. It can be safer with some horses to have control of their head by hand. With this particular colt, I think he should be fine with this tie arrangement, which is through a tie ring, so if he was to get upset and fly back, it would give him slack. So the first thing I want to do is I've got, this is actually referred to as a sulky whip. Uh, supposedly, I guess they'd use this with a standard bred driving horses. I'm sort of startled how short it is, but it's good for my purposes. I like to use this to rub around their legs. Now he's had a little bit of this before but I'll just make sure he's okay with this. And I like this type of stick or this longer so-called stockyard whip because they have a little flex to them. You see that? And this one even more so. The well-made and expensive training sticks that you can buy from clinicians are stiff. And I think this is a little more forgiving. And if the horse would paw or make a move, see how it will bend and flex with them. And you can actually almost wrap it around their leg, which you couldn't do with one of those rigid sticks. So I like these just fine. Plus they think this costs six bucks uh, instead of 36. So I'm just taking the opportunity while I'm talking to play with his feet. Also to rub this down his belly because you're going to be getting into all sorts of awkward positions. I would rather use this stick than my hand because see that little move right there? If he was to kick, which he seems to have an idea might be a good thing, I would rather that my head and my wrist weren't down there. He can kick the living hell out of this whip and it will recover real well. I'm not too sure I would. Now you see that pawn, it's not just him being restless. This is a very nice, confident colt who has just a little bit of a temper. And we're learning that about him. That doesn't trouble me, but I'm taking due note of that. Because if you crossed him, he's got enough guts and enough grit, he would probably fight back instead of just automatically giving in or trying to get away. But he's also a thinker, so I've, in a very short span, taken some of that kick out of him, which is a, a good thing. The whole way down, up the outside, up under his belly, the whole way down across his thigh there, across his inside of his hock. And the whole way up. You can see he's got a little bit of a, uh, an injury there. It's actually, he got tangled up in a poly wire fence, which is pretty soft and forgiving, but it was still wrapped up on him and had some pressure there. He swelled up pretty good, never broke the skin. My wife, who really likes this colt, saw him, went out on her own, no halter, no nothing asked him to stand still and unwrapped his leg. So I also think that proves he's got some sense and that when the chips are down, he maybe is gonna be one that comes through and I sure like that. So I'm just gonna carefully step around his back end here. And do this same thing from a little different position because they're, they, they can feel subtle differences.
So now that he's not as dedicated to kicking, and he never did show much of an intent to strike, I'm just going to take a brush. Now, this may speak to my qualities as a groom. This colt's only been brushed off a few times, so just being brushed is a novelty to him. But it gives me the opportunity to get down there and handle his legs while I'm doing something else. It's an odd thing about a horse, but a lot of times they'll put up with things if you're doing something else. He's saying, well, that's just brushing. That's not handling my leg. That's just brushing. And I had a little bit of that before, and that doesn't bother me. Now, I will probably cross over and do his other front foot. We are all creatures of habit. Now, see, he's standing there. I want to say, move over, and I'm going to go cluck, cluck. There. I'm looking for him to move over when I cluck. He has no idea what that means, but for the rest of his life, when I go and ask him to step his hip over, I'll cluck, and within a few sessions, he'll be stepping over. So there, we're getting the front feet done, front legs done. I could go down this back leg. And you know, the interesting thing was when he was wrapped up in that fence and needed help, he did not show any inclination to kick. And that, that, that shows some good sense and some appreciation for the fact that we humans might be able to help him. Yeah, I haven't looked at that for a while. It's just a little abraded. It never got raw but it was quite a tight ligature. I'll tell you, if we hadn't found him right when we did, my concern is he really could have done some damage. But he stood quietly, and that let us deal with that situation. Or I should say I let my wife deal with it, who was kind of the hero of that story. So I've got a rope here, and this is a soft nylon rope. I bought years ago at the hardware store. Uh, marine rope's really good, but this is a braided rope, and I've been using it a long time, and it's soft enough. It's got some feel. I got a big old snap on it that will put a little pressure on his lower leg when I squeeze, but will also, or when I lift, but will also release real nicely. So I'm going to take this here. Now, I'm not going to snap it. I'm going to do this. Because he, this is completely new to him. And I'm going to take it all around. Now, I'm going to snap it. I'm going to let that snap go down there. Then I'm going to put just a little bit of tension on him. See that? That was all I need. That was, that was all I needed. Now, I don't want him moving around, but it's good for him to learn that that rope is not a harmful thing. Now, I'm going to put a little pressure on. There you go. And I'll let him drop it. I don't care if he paws. I'm asking him for a response with his foot, and he doesn't know what that response might be. And I'm not going to refine that at this point. I'm just going to say, Thanks for reacting. There, there's a reaction. Pull a little, and you can see how little I'm actually pulling. Now I'm gonna hang in there till he does something besides walking and does something like that and holds it up just a little longer. Now here's the surprising part of this video. I'm now gonna say to him, thank you. I'm gonna take it off. And I'm going to say that's it for the day. I could feel real good about myself, maybe make a little more impressive video by doing more with that foot and going around to the other three feet. But you know, I hope to have this colt for a long time and I can take the time to get him used to these things and quit when I'm on a real good note, which I felt like I was there. So even later today, I might go back to him but he's been tied here. He's been reasonable. He 
went from wanting to kick to not wanting to kick. That's good. Maybe just to be a little, a little bit greedy, I got one front foot. It would be interesting to see how he is if I go around his back foot. Now, a little bit more touchy. Now I'm gonna take this up here and kind of carefully gather it. And what I'm not gonna do with this foot is put it around his cannon bone, which is right in the area where he had that little bit of an injury. I'm gonna let it drop down a little. And there we've got it around his fetlock there, his pastern there. And I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on there. Little bit of pressure, see? Little bit of pressure. Little bit of pressure there. Now you have to be a little careful that you don't teach him to kick. So if he kicks, I'll kind of hang in there until he stops kicking, then I'll let him down. So that was sort of a half-hearted little kick, but there. And that wasn't really a kick, that was a pretty definite takeaway, which right now, it doesn't trouble me a whole lot. Now I'm tangled up in ropes, not the best thing to do, but I think I'll survive it. Little tension, little tension, little more, little more. I don't want to make this a force thing. There, there. Very nice, buddy. Thank you, son. Yeah, and I know he's, he's a little angry about this or frustrated, but he stayed with me. I'm gonna see if I can take this off without losing any of my own hide. And there, I did get a little greedy, but I got the left side handled up a little. And you would use the same process all around. Maybe he'll just trim his left, left feet this time. But hopefully, in the next few days, I'll be able to get him sorted out. Don't need to do it today. Feel like that was a good lesson for him. I learned a little bit about him. Maybe you did too. Try it out on your young horse. Hope it works for you. Till next time.